I'm Anne-Marie Parada, WGC Counselor and Awards Chair, and welcome to the 25th Annual WGC Canadian Screenwriters Awards Show. Now, that was a great 25th anniversary reel, but let's face it, 26 is like a special number. So that's why we're going to celebrate the 26th anniversary of the award show next year, 2022, at Kerner Hall, so please join us. Now, this event is online, and we want it to be fabulous and fun, but most of all, fast. So the WGC would like to acknowledge that although this event is online, we would each live and work on ancestral Indigenous land. As we gather tonight, we would like to respectfully acknowledge the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, Huron Wendat, and the Mississaugas of the New Credit, on which the City of Toronto and our office stands. We give our thanks and respect for the leadership of Indigenous land defenders across the country, for always being at the forefront of protecting the earth and all life that sustains it. And we are grateful to have the opportunity to work in the community on this territory. Now, tonight's host, Emma Hunter, is an award-winning comedian and actor who recently filmed the CBC drama, Feudal. And you may also know her from three seasons as co-host and writer on The Beaverton on CTV. So please welcome Emma Hunter. Good evening, everyone, writers, creators, and esteemed members and friends of the Writers Guild of Canada. I'm Emma Hunter, and I am coming to you from the WGC headquarters in downtown Toronto. Now, it has been a doozy of a year. Schitt's Creek swept the CSAs and the Emmys. Nurses was sold to NBC. Transplant has been a massive hit and continues to be, even if you're Jewish. There's also been some, well, more interesting moments. Bell Media called the herd. Netflix and CBC did cattle calls for content that received thousands and thousands of submissions. So I guess everyone is a writer. And most writers found the whole thing more discouraging than anything else. The Academy of Canadian Cinema and Television want to open up the craft categories to Americans, which means we, Canadian writers, are paying taxes for Americans to receive awards in Canada. What the crap is that? And Kim's convenience happened. Okay, here's how this usually goes. A production prays to the network gods that they get another season. Now in my case, the network usually says no. But in their case, the network said yes, and they said no. This is the upside down of TV. And frankly, it has big tit energy. And I am here for it. The point is, Canada, even during the depths of the pandemic, continues to create, produce, and write incredible content. We break story together, shape character together, and despite what producers might want you to think, it is the writers that write. It is a privilege to be hosting this show tonight to honor your success as writers. Because without you, well, you know, that's an interesting question. I actually wrote, uh, that first bit with some help from my parents and my neighbor and this waitress who said she was a writer. And then I was like, you know what, I think I'm probably just gonna improv the rest on the day because it was hard to come up with ideas and it was taking forever, you know? And I just wanted to stop doing it, to be honest. Um, I'm actually an actor and I can usually come up with really hilarious, smart stuff in the moment. Like I'll just say, um, can we just try one where, you know, I play around a little and they're like, yes, please, we love that. And then I do something hilarious and smart and then they're usually like, that was amazing. Could you do one the way it's written? And I'll be like, yeah, sure. But you're probably just gonna wanna use the other take where I was just riffing. And they're like, yeah, please just stay on your mark and stick to the original text. And it sort of goes back and forth in this kind of jam sesh of creativity uh, for a few minutes. Anyway, uh, the point is, I'm just going off book, because there is no book, because I, uh, I didn't write anymore. So let's freestyle. Uh, yeah. The finalists for best writing for a feature film are Achilles Escape, story by Charles Officer, screenplay by Charles Officer and Motion. Beans, story by Tracy Deer. Screenplay by Tracy Deer and Meredith Bushnick. The Willoughby's Story by Chris Pern. Screenplay by Chris Pern and Mark Stanley. And the winner is Tracy Deer and Meredith Bushnick for Beans. 
Congratulations, Tracy and Meredith. You have the honor of being our first awards recipients tonight, which means you also have the responsibility of keeping your acceptance speech to 90 seconds or less, which is about as much funny material as I've had the whole show. Over to you. Thank you so much. Um, this is incredible, an incredible honor. Um, I want to, we want to thank our producer, Anne-Marie Jolina, who has been with us on this project for, it feels like a hundred years. Our partners were all very enthusiastic about this. Uh, we want to thank Telephone Canada, SODEC, the CMF, Crave, Supa Ecran, the CFC, CBC Films, the Howard Greenberg Fund, Wasabi, Metropole, and Mongrel. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to Ganawage and Ganasudage who exemplify resilience and strength and really inspire this entire story. And a big shout out to my co-writer, Meredith Rushnik, who made it safe for me to be vulnerable and um, made it possible for this story to come to life. So thank you so much, Dart. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, I'd like to thank my parents and my sisters who have always supported and made me laugh and my husband Chris Donaldson and my kids Sophia, Michael and Rachel and all of our partners that Tracy mentioned. We're honored to be even mentioned and nominated along with Charles and Motion and Chris and Mark. I'd like to thank my agents for introducing me to Tracy 10 years ago. We'd like to thank the WGC for fighting for writers and for sending us to the dentist in equal measure. And about seven years ago, I had back-to-back -back concussions. My friends, my family, and this community carried me through it. I was your pro productive procrastination. Thank you to so many of you who showed up for me then. Thank you, you know who you are. And finally, Tracy dear, thank you for trusting me enough to put your heart open and tell your story and let me help you bring this into the world. I'm so proud of you and I'm so grateful to be a part of this project and I can't, Tell, please plead with you enough to see this movie and take all your people when we can see movies again. Thank you for this great honor. Next, the finalists for best writing for a documentary are The Detectives, Project Prism, written by Eric Sabag. John Ware Reclaimed, written by Cheryl Fogo. Still Standing, Rankin Inlet. Written by Johnny Harris, Fraser Young, Graham Chittenden, and Steve Dillon. And the winners are Johnny Harris, Fraser Young, Graham Chittenden, and Steve Dillon for Still Standing, Rankin Inlet. Congratulations, Johnny, Fraser, Graham, and Steve. Over to you guys. Now, none of this Newfoundland storytelling. Let's keep it to 90 seconds, boys. Uh Amazing, I mean, uh, thanks so much. Um, we were uh, just thrilled. This is our first uh, Writers Guild Award, uh, our first Writers Guild nomination. And we were all pretty uh, uh, chuffed when we got the word, uh, feeling pretty official. Um, it's it's um, wonderful to be recognized by, by peers who know uh, both how um, great and grievous it can be to write content for television. Um, as far as honing story for uh, Still Standing, we have to share, uh, uh, Fraser and, and Steve and Graham and myself uh, have to share this award with uh, um, our executive producer, Anne Francis, with uh, Alex Lazarowicz, uh, our researcher, uh, Maya Bilbao, um, and, and the, the uh, uh, sometimes unsung heroes of, of Still Standing, our uh, story producers, uh, in particular, I should mention Dave Kerr, Shayla Howell, and uh, Mike Schultz, who story produced on this uh, episode, our uh, Rank and Inlet episode. So uh, on behalf of all of us, uh, uh, th uh, thanks so much. We're just thrilled. And the finalists for best writing in the children's category are Odd Squad Mobile Unit Slow Your Roll, written by Mark DeAngelis. Ollie's Pack Birthday Schmirth Day, a Cleo Bidet documentary, written by Jeff Sager. Xavier Riddle and the Secret Museum, I Am Harriet Tubman, story by Desmond Sargent and Megan Reed, teleplay by Desmond Sargent. And the winner is Mark DeAngelis for Odd Squad Mobile Unit Slow Your Roll. Congratulations, Mark. Thank you so much. This is my first ever WGC award. So I'm, I'm flattered and honored. Thank you to the 
WGC community. Uh, I'd like to also thank my fellow nominees and congratulate them. Tim and Adam, the creators of the show, all the writers who worked on Odd Squad this season, Sinking Ship Entertainment, the production company for supporting us. And uh, in a weird way, today is um, the one year anniversary of my uh, grandmother's passing. And I know that she would want you all to know that she had everything to do with this. So yes, that's all. Thank you. So uh, I'm just getting ready for the big show and I am having my hair and makeup done by my amazing hair and makeup artist, Sandra S. Yang. We are very close, very close. I'm sort of almost like more like friends, really. Like maybe even, you know, best friends, I think. I feel like that. Anyway, and it's very important, you guys won't know this because you're writers, that when you are a very you know, famous person, you always have to be having your hair and makeup done. Always. Because you don't know if somebody's going to try to grab a pic for the gram. You have to be ready. And, you know, you have to look like a movie star because you are one. Well, you're not. But I am. And so, yeah, we do all the big Hollywood-style thingies uh, that go on, like all the red carpets, the TIFF parties. I met you twice. think I mean I, I don't no I don't I know I, I was joking around mostly I don't really like it either um nice black bra yeah why wouldn't we? <sighs> anyway I'm really hoping this goes well because I want to get into a lot more of these kind of big shows like uh this type of thing maybe weddings do weddings have hosts I don't know I don't get invited to a lot of weddings not a loser um oh but Speaking of which, stand by. Option two. Huh? Is that your wedding dress? I mean, yeah. I've only worn it the once. It was fucking expensive, so. Was it? No. Here to announce the Sandra Kelly Award, please welcome Sujith Barogays. I'm Sujith Varughese, and I've been asked again this year to present the Sandra Kelly Award on behalf of AFBS, whose board I sit on representing the Writers Guild, and who sponsor this award in Sandra's memory. Uh, Sandra was our first governor on the board of AFBS. Uh, this award is given every year to a female writer in mid-career who has a passion project that they could use a little bit of money to help them kickstart it into fruition. It was a cause that was near and dear to Sandra's heart. Um, I knew Sandra, and uh, we actually sat on an Arts Council jury together once. She was an amazing pitcher of stories. Uh, she would read her screenplays on this jury and present them to the rest of us, and they they were so good when she told us about them that we just wanted to give the applicant money. And then she'd say, no, no, they're, they're not ready for support yet. But her pitch was fantastic. Uh, tonight's winner also made a fantastic pitch and was selected by the jury unanimously. Um, she wants to write a 10 episode, three part series uh, based on true events and real characters from her own life. Uh, it's um, a, quite an intense topic. It's about bipolar disorder, but she's going to make it funny because as she said in her application, that's how she coped with it in her own life. Um, it's with great pleasure that I present the 2021 Sandra Kelly Award to Kate Hewlett for her project, Everything is Funny. Congratulations, Kate. Oh, it's working, how fabulous. Uh, this is this is very exciting. I'm so happy to be winning this award. Um, it's also fulfilling my lifelong dream of bringing my cats to an award show. Always wanted to do that. They'll be joining us probably in a couple of minutes. Um, I wanted to thank the WGC for choosing this project 
and not the one I submitted last year, <laughs> which was quite awkward. I realized in retrospect, uh, I'm prouder of this one. Uh, and I wanted to thank Sandra Kelly, who I have never met, but she sounds like who I never met, got to me, but she sounds like a, a truly amazing person. And I recently learned that she also wrote on two shows my brother was in, so she must have been extremely patient. I wanted to thank Lara Atzapardi and Larissa Kondracki, two of my hero slash friends, friend heroes, um, who have written me letters for this award every single time I've applied, which is not a small number of times. <laughs> Never give up. Uh, this project, which is called Everything is Funny, is loosely based on the story of my eldest sister. So I felt I should ask her permission before speaking about her tonight. And uh, I said, I wanted to talk about all the things she had accomplished. And she said, yes, absolutely. Say whatever you want, but I haven't done anything to be proud of. And so I thought I would give you a quick rundown of, of what she's been through and you can decide for yourselves. Um, when I was little, she was very much like a second mom to me. She's eight years older and she was very kind and caring and occasionally walked me into signposts, but never on purpose. She's a little spaced out sometimes. Um, then when she hit her teenage years, she got very, very sick uh, fairly suddenly. And she was diagnosed with every mental illness under the sun, um, the, the top faves being uh, bipolar disorder, borderline personality disorder. She struggled with addiction, a brutal eating disorder. And for a time she was actually homeless. We didn't know where she was. And um, that was probably the lowest point. And this continued until her mid thirties. And this was our normal for the whole family. So we heard from her in her mid thirties that she was pregnant. And the, the Hewlett family went into crisis mode which is where we spend our weekends. And uh, we freaked out, you know, she's pregnant, she's got a mental illness, she's, she wants to keep the baby. One of us is gonna have to take this child and raise the child, like if we went, we fully freaked out. Um, and then we found out that she was pregnant with twins, single mother, mental illness, twins. And so we went into further crisis mode. And then almost like a miracle, uh, everything changed. And we don't know if it was a hormonal shift or if it was just blind stubbornness or an actual miracle, but she got better. And she raised twin girls by herself. She went back to school, she got her degree. She was valedictorian, I think. She never does anything in half measures. Uh, for 13 years, she had no symptoms. And then one day she got very sick again. And I think for her, that's where she feels like she was a failure, but for all of us, we feel like that's where the strength really shone through because she continued to parent through the mental illness, through this brutal depression and darkness. And she got herself out of bed every day. She raised these two incredibly cool, sporty, which is not a Hewlett thing, very smart, wonderful kids who are now 17 and who just got into every university they applied for. That was me bragging. Um, she did that by herself with a mental illness. So I will let you decide if she has anything to be proud of. Uh, but thank you so much. I'm so excited to be able to, to tell this story through TV, which I love so much. And I also feel that, you know, despite the darkness of the illness, it's gonna be a show that's full of joy and hope. So thank you to the WGC and to Sandra Kelly and uh, to all the writers out there who are inspiring me every day. Thank you. I'm gonna stop my video and I'm gonna mute. Okay, fine. Yeah, I'm just gonna. So, uh, I'm Emma Hunter. Okay, 
And uh, I, I'm actually hosting the WGC Awards this year. Yeah, I know. I hired you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, small snag. So I, I um, didn't write anything because I could, it, it was hard to come up with ideas in my mind. And uh, yeah, I could, it was just taking forever. So I didn't. So it's just, I'm just struggling a little bit with the um, material. Yeah. Well, you gotta write something or there's no scratch for you. Huh? Yeah, if you don't write the show, you don't get the dough. Oh, <laughs> that's actually funny. <laughs> Yikes, okay, jeez. The finalists for Best Writing in the MOW and Miniseries category are Christmas on My Mind, written by Kristen Hansen. Gourmet Detective, Rue the Day, written by Becky Southwell and Dylan Neal. No Good Deed, written by Doug Barber. And the winner is Becky Southwell and Dylan Neal for Gourmet Detective, Rue the Day. Congratulations to Becky and Dylan. Over to you. Well, thank you so much, Emma. Uh, wow, this is fantastic. So cool. Uh, we would like to thank uh, Michelle Vickery and Randy Pope at Hallmark and Joel Rice at Muse Entertainment down here in Los Angeles, where we are, and Michael Prupus with Muse Entertainment up in Canada. Uh, we've worked with those four people for six or seven years now, and they've been such great partners and collaborators with us, uh, not only on the Gourmet Detective franchise, but many other projects that we've done with them. And we've just had a really great run with the Gourmet Detective. This is our second nomination actually mm -hmm. for uh, for that franchise. And we uh, we really appreciate this. We've had um, just so much fun. And, I, and of course, I have to thank my beautiful and talented wife, who's really the brains and talent behind the operation. I'm really just riding her coattails. So He's thanks, drunk. Hunter. Well. Uh, and thanks to our fellow nominees. This is very cool. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Next, the finalists for best writing in the preschool category. 16 Hudson, Tickle Tornado, written by Suzanne Bulk and John May. Dino Dana, Prehistoric Hospital, written by J.J. Johnson, Kristen Sims, and Jagji Vin Sohal. Dino Dana, The Sound of Dinosaurs, written by J.J. Johnson. Kingdom Force, Big Cat Blues, written by Alex Genetakos. Remy and Boo, The Squaler, written by Hiroshi Okada. And the winner is J.J. Johnson for Dino Dana, The Sound of Dinosaurs. Congratulations, J.J. Hey everyone, I am presenting, I am accepting, not presenting for JJ. I uh, just wanted to say thank you to the Writers Guild, the fellow nominees and everyone who voted for JJ. Not for me, but that's fine. And then uh, I just wanted to say Dino Dana is a show that was created to challenge the representation of girls in kids TV. This is a show for girls who don't let any anything stop them. And so I wanna say a big thank you to the cast and crew, TVO Kids, Marnie especially, Amazon, Yupa, Shaw Rocket Prize, and everyone at Sinking Ship for helping us make a show about fearless and unstoppable girls who love action adventure, dinosaurs, and science. Dinosaurs are for girls too. Thank you. And the finalists for best writing in the shorts and web series category are Detention Adventure, Buried Treasure, written by Joe Kikak. My Pride, the series Rain, written by Maddie Patton. Queens, Minnie and Sharon, written by Pat Mills. Try to Fly, written by Simone Swan and the Affolter Brothers. And the winner is Simone Swan and the Affolter Brothers for Try to Fly. Congratulations to Simone, Keith, Thomas, John, and Nathan. Oh, hello everyone. None of you guys know who we are. We're, we're the new kids on the block, I think, around here. Thanks so much to the Writers Guild for this award. 
There's my brother Heath down there. There's my brother Nathan and our niece Phoebe. Everyone in the Writers Guild, say hello to Phoebe. <laughs> She's picking her nose, I think. <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah, thanks so much. Obviously, we had an amazing uh, crew on this one and cast. Simone is the only cast member. She was amazing. Big shout out to CBC, uh, Sheila Peacock and Paige Murray. They, they literally brought it to life. Wouldn't have happened without CBC's funding. And now it's on CBC Gym where it lives and stuff. And uh, we're super stoked about it. I don't know what else to say other than I guess this was supposed to be a personal story where we kind of like just poured all of our insecurity and anxiety on screen and hoped that, you know, because it was personal to us, it would be relatable to other people. Uh, and I don't know, audiences will decide if that's true or not, but one way or the other, shout out to all y'all who feel like, you know, especially in this business, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of failure and a lot of rejection. And, uh, you know, you can often feel like it's, it's hard to get by, like there's 90% failure to every 10% success rate. So for all you imposters out there, we feel the imposter syndrome every day. It's not a feeling, it's a lifestyle. And uh, shout out to all y'all to just keep on keeping on, you know? I guess that's yeah. it. Anything else? No. Yay. Wow. What? <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's all we got, guys. That's all we got. I'm, uh, I'm just uh, calling Ebony Rosen. She's big. Co-created New Eden. Wrote all that. And then she did a, uh, like, Baroness von sketch. She's like, a big deal. And, uh, yeah, we're back. Hey, Ev. It's Ev. Emma Hunter. Oh, uh, from the Beaverton. Um, no, I know. It got canceled. Mr. D. No, yeah, no, that's not on. I know. Did you see Fridge Wars? That's great. I mean, there's fridge in the title, which just really cuts the shit out, you know? It just gets to the cool of what... Yes, it got canceled too. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, I'll, get to, I'll just right, get right to it. Um, so yeah, I've been asked to um, write the Writers Guild of Canada Awards because I'm so famous and I actually need some help with the writing because I honestly couldn't come up with any ideas and it was taking forever. So I was wondering if like you could help me out because I don't... Ev? Ev? Ebony? Oh, okay. yeah, she must have gone in a tunnel or something. Got like a, gone in an elevator or something. That's cool. She'll probably, she'll call me back. Here to announce the winner for the Jim Burt Screenwriting Prize, please welcome Doug Taylor. Hi. It is so great to be part of this virtual online award ceremony. I am especially honored to be presenting the Jim Burt Prize for Long Form Screenwriting. The Jim Burt Screenwriting Prize was created to honor the work of the late Jim Burt, his 20-year career at CBC, and his lifelong commitment to promoting Canadian screenwriting. The winner of this prize receives $3,000, and the Guild allots an additional $2,000 an experienced story editor to help the recipient further develop their winning script. That's a great prize. This year's entries represent a wide range of genres, periods, settings, and original themes. Selecting the finalists and the winner is both daunting and rewarding as the jurors reflect on the power and potential of each script. The finalists for the 2021 Jim Burke Screenwriting Prize are Goners by Ken Eaton. Magnificent by Travis McDonald. Sluggy and Bogey by Tommy Gushu. Struck by Lynn Cam. Tall Grass by Bree Proke. And this year's winner is Magnificent, written by Travis McDonald. Magnificent is based on a true story and is a compelling behind-the-scenes look at a highly controversial season in professional hockey history. The season when everything changed. So congratulations, Travis. Carry on. Thank you so much, Doug. Um, thanks to the Writers Guild um, and the jury. Thanks to Jim Burton and his legacy. Um, I'm very honored to, to be getting this prize. Um, this is a story I've had with me since, since I was a kid. Um, 
I vividly remember having a conversation about it with my dad when I was about 10 years old. And um, it's just kind of stuck me, stuck with me ever since. And it's not a personal story, but I guess the telling of it has been very personal and I get a way to spend time with my dad so many years after losing him. And um, I'm just very touched and sincerely appreciate the recognition. Um, thank you so much. You're not filming, are you? Okay, cool. I don't know how this thing actually, this is called a step and repeat, eh? And so I'm really, I don't think I'm supposed to use this, but it would be really cool if when we're done, I could grab a couple selfies in front of this thing because there's no uh, red carpets and I got a lot of Insta followers. So uh, I have like over a thousand followers. It's like half the O'Keefe Center. Not to brag, but yeah. I and mean, I'll just do maybe like, like that, maybe, or maybe I'll do one like, um, like very like Gwyneth Paltrow, like. This looks like shit. I thought it was gonna be, oh man. Where's Sandra? I need a selfie for my followers. I have like over a thousand followers. Something like that. I could even do a walking one. I'm gonna wear sort of like this. A movie star just so you really get your hips into it, like. Repeat, seven feet. Very Je Jennifer Lopez, very Victoria's Secret. Repeat. <sighs> Do you think this is going well? I think this is not going well. Maybe I should have made some notes or something. Frig. <sighs> you can do this. You are special. You have brown hair. You are strong. You are 36. I just wrote that, so it's not that hard. Just came up with that right now, and I already feel better. Pretty good. It's not that hard. The finalists for best writing for a comedy series are New Eden, Who Are These Women? Written by Ebony Rosen and Kayla Lorette. Schitt's Creek, Happy Ending, written by Daniel Levy. Schitt's Creek, Sunrise, Sunset, written by Kurt Smeaton and Winter Tekanos Levy. And the winner is Daniel Levy for Schitt's Creek. Congratulations to Daniel Levy. Dan, if you keep this up, I think you might have a career in TV. Look at me, anything can happen. Hello and uh, and thank you, uh, Writers Guild of Canada and everyone who voted for me. Um, this show was obviously a labor of love, so to receive this recognition in our final season um, is especially meaningful. And I also want to say thank you for supporting um, our writers over the past six seasons, recognizing various writers um, for for their work as well. Um, I wanted to thank in particular David Westreed, Rupinder Gill, and Winter Tekanos Levy um, for their work over the past six seasons on this show um, and for doing such a damn good job of helping to steer this ship with me. Um, thank you to the Writers Guild of Canada for championing our show and thank you to all of you for watching and here's hoping that we can continue this adventure we're all on and continue to bring Canadian talent, Canadian writers um, into the spotlight in a bigger way um, and celebrate all that we have to offer because we do have so much to offer. Thank you so much again. And um, I wish we could all be together for this. Thanks. Next, the finalists for best writing in the tweens and teens category are Lockdown, Social Togetherness, Story by J.J. Johnson and Kristen Sims. Teleplay by J.J. Johnson and Kristen Sims and Nicole Stamp. Lockdown, Stake Outing, written by Lachna Edelima. Mallory Towers, The Ghost, written by Kate Hewlett. Utopia Falls, The World is Yours, written by Joseph Malozzi and R.T. Thorne. And the winner is 
Joseph Malozzi and R.T. Thorne for Utopia Falls, The World is Yours. Congratulations to Joseph and R.T. Now, unfortunately, Joseph couldn't be here with us tonight to accept the award, but R.T. is. Lucky us. Over to you, R.T. Wow, wow, wow. Um, this is crazy. Um, a big, big, big shout out to, uh, to the Writers Guild of Canada. Thanks so much for this recognition. It's, that's pretty amazing. Um, and, uh, and then an equally big shout out to my brother in arms, Joe Malozzi. Thank you, brother. Thank you for, um, you know, I learned so much from you, man. And thank you for um, helping me to build out this universe. Um, it's pretty incredible. Um, I want to definitely thank our entire amazing writing room. I couldn't have um, asked for a better group of people to build with. Um, just uh, had a great time working with you all. Um, Sonar Entertainment for uh, taking a shot on a wild uh, hip hop sci-fi idea like you did. Thank you so much for taking shots, taking chances on stories you've never heard before. So I appreciate you all for that. Same goes out to Hulu and uh, CBC Gem for all their support um, and uh, our incredible cast, our incredible diverse cast for just diving in on these stories and um, you know trusting us with this. It was just a pleasure to work with everybody. And um, more than anything, I gotta thank our amazing fans um, for just uh, embracing us like you did. Um, giving us uh, life throughout the entire year and beyond. You're still, you guys are still out there tweeting, <laughs> asking for season two. So thank you so much. Um, yeah, it's just uh, an incredible honor to be able to tell uh, stories of like marginalized young people in the future so they can see themselves. They know that they're important. Um, and I just, uh, I really appreciate everybody for that. Thank you so much for the honor. Appreciate you all. And the finalists for Best Writing for a Drama Series are Cardinal, Until the Night, Adele, written by Sarah Dodd. Digstown, Willie McIsaac Redux, written by Floyd Kane. Transplant, Pilot, written by Joseph K. Transplant, Trigger Warning, written by Lynn Cam. Transplant, Under Pressure, written by Tamara Moulin. Trickster, Episode 105, story by Michelle Latimer, Tony Elliott, and Penny Gummerson. Teleplay by Penny Gummerson. And the winner is Michelle Latimer, Tony Elliott, and Penny Gummerson for Trickster, Episode 105. Congratulations to Michelle, Tony, and Penny. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm a bit uh, shocked. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much to the Writers Guild. Um, very humbled and honored to be recognized by you, my fellow writers, um, and to my fellow nominees. Uh, I'm in awe of your talent. Um, whew, little shaky. It's, a, it's truly a privilege um, and an honor, I, I believe, to be able to tell stories for a living. It's a privilege to sit in a room full of writers who generously share uh, their personal stories, some funny, some painful, to help make the stories we're telling on screen that much more real and authentic. Um, I recently talked to an elder who calls our personal stories and memories our knowings, and that landed deeply for me. So thank you for sharing your knowings. To be able to work on a series that invites viewers into a world of family and love and heartache and healing, uh, a world of indigenous culture and language and humor. It was a true gift. And uh, some of these, some people call this world of shapeshifters and visions and spirits uh, mythology or supernatural. And I have to laugh because it's the life I live and the world I live in daily just before uh, this event, I was outside on my eighth floor balcony and an eagle flew by and I was just like, oh, hi, mom, how's it going? 
So nothing super about it for me. It's just as real as you. But um, big thank you uh, to our master storyteller, Eden Robinson. This series wouldn't have happened uh, without her novels. Huge thanks to the whole Trickster family, the other writers in the room, the cast, the crew, Sienna Films and CBC. Um, I seriously think it takes a village to raise a writer. I know that's been the case for me. So thank you to the many people who have nurtured me uh, along the way, generous with their gifts, with their hearts, um, my elders, my family, my friends, and my writing mentors. And a special thanks to my agent, Jenny Hollier and her incredible team. Uh, thank you, Jenny, for always supporting me and telling stories that are close to my heart and that mean something to me. And I'll just end with this. Last week, uh, I was talking with my dear friend and my writing person, Karen Hill. And we were talking about how people tend to say, write what you know, but we both agreed, it goes a little deeper than that to write who you are. And believe me, I've been in enough healing circles and sweat lodges and vision quests. It's taken many years to figure out who I am, but I'm grateful for the journey. And so to the young writers out there, especially young indigenous writers, our stories matter, your voice matters, share your knowings with the world and uh, don't be afraid to write who you are. So. Hi, hi, thank you, all my relations, and thanks to the Musqueam people whose ancestral land I'm on today. Thank you. Writers Guild Canada. Writers Guild of Canada. Nothing, I can't come up with anything. What even is that? I'm just saying the name of the thing. Frig. Ah. Excuse me, do you mind? Can I get a picture? For sure, for sure. Are you a big French Wars fan. <laughs> sure. You just you just press that button right there. Okay. Oh. Okay. Now you look cute. Thanks. Hey man, you're not filming, are you? I don't think this is going very well. It's like. Normally I can come up with like really smart stuff. Maybe I should have written something. I've been doing this my whole career. But like, thought I could just wing some hilarious anecdotes. Not good. It's like, just go to shit at me. Frank! Here to announce the WGC Showrunner Award, please welcome Motion. The showrunner is the creative force behind a TV series. They are the keeper of the creative vision and oversee everything from development through writing and production to post. This award is to celebrate a showrunner at the top of their game. A great writer and outstanding leader who guides writers rooms and productions with integrity and makes some great television along the way. This year, we are happy to announce the 2021 recipient of the Showrunner of the Year Award is Morwin Brevner. Hello, I'm Motion, and I'm happy to share this remix of accolades from our writers who have worked closely with Morwin and a few of the words that have collectively come to mind. Visionary creator, fearless leader, fierce and inspiring, generous and strong, a superwoman showrunner. With her dedication to the craft of storytelling, Morin creates compelling, entertaining, award-winning work that captivates audiences worldwide. Her hit show Coroner on CBC has garnered international viewers from the UK to across Europe and Latin America, making waves on CW in the US and trending on Netflix. But all of that is possible because Morwen exemplifies the best of the profession. Her special way of heading collaborative creativity, bringing out the best in those she works with, makes her an inspiring example of what a showrunner can be. Not only is Morwen gifted on the page, basically her superpower, but she also is able to translate her vision for the show to writers, producers, networks, directors, cast, and crew. She creates a dynamic environment filled with excitement over what becomes a shared vision. 
and in the writer's room is where the magic begins. Morwen fosters an environment of support where every voice is important. She shows and proves her commitment to inclusion, visibility, and artistic freedom. From day one, she sets the tone for a creative space where everyone has the right to be respected, where every writer's unique voice and life experience is heard and valued. This sets the stage for deep discussions, the bearing of souls and personal histories that leads writers to create worlds rich and characters and stories. Morin envisioned a show that truly reflected Toronto. She wanted to nurture rising talent and amplify unheard stories and represent diverse voices in meaningful ways in the writer's room behind the scenes and on the screen. She puts writers first, running healthy story rooms which allow writers to explore the worlds and themes of the show through their own unique lens. Morwin encourages us to promote ourselves, our heritages and cultures, sexualities, gender identities, and our worldviews. As a storyteller and showrunner, she creates an ecosystem of support where writers are empowered to take creative risks. Morin approaches her role with courage and vision, willing to push the envelope and break barriers. She inspires the team to incorporate challenging topics and nurtures writers' instincts. And on top of all that, she balances the people management of show running equally as well with grace, integrity, respect, and love. Through her example, Morin isn't only ensuring the success and well-being of one story room or one show. She is creating a legacy for future Canadian story rooms and a brighter future for the industry. Her unwavering faith fosters an environment in which we all can thrive and succeed. And we thank her for her continued impact, for her leadership, humanity, and advocacy, and for her brilliance and talent. We all join in celebration of your incredible achievements, Morin and your contributions to Canadian television. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, thank you, Motion. That was really a really beautiful introduction. Um, um, like a nerd, um, I wrote my speech, so I'm going to read. Um, uh, um, I uh, I never thought that I would win this award, and uh, I will say that to be nominated by um, the writers in this room, in the coroner room, um, where I have found the most friendship and intellectual stimulation and art and love of creation and just love um, in general is uh, really overwhelming. Uh, I hope that every writer gets a room like this at some point in their careers because it is life changing. Uh, I am grateful to Sean Raycraft, Noel Carbone, Juanita Storms, Natalie Young Lai, Seneca Aaron, Motion, Leah Cameron, Kivi Lynch, Shannon Masters, Marsha Green, Chris Roberts, Lindsay Adawu, and Janet Bullard. Um, I would also like to thank Will Smack, David Barlow, and Aaron Martin, who worked on Coroner in Development. And I have immense gratitude to the showrunners that I've worked for and with and who I've learned from, um, including Semi Chalice, Tassie Cameron, Adam Petal, and Tara Armstrong. And to Adrian Mitchell, who is just an electric uh, collaborator and a brilliant friend. And um, to the amazing Janice Lundman, who's a wonderful producer and was basically my shrink for two years. And Suzanne Colvin-Golding, Sarah Adams, Helen Azamakis, Trish Williams, and CBC, and Cineflix, and Muse, who let Coroner be its weird self. And to the wonderful cast and crew of Coroner, um, Sorinda and Roger, and all the artists who helped make the show, and to the WGC. Um, I'd like to thank four people in particular um, who taught me how to be a person in this job. Tim Southam, who once told me to keep a low pulse, which is good advice at any time, uh, and who's been a generous mentor to me um, throughout my career. Ellen Vanstone, who is a great friend and a life mentor, and who unilaterally got us um, promoted on Rookie Blue when she told the person making the contact sheet that we were co-executive producers. Um, Malcolm McCrory, who called me out on two specific occasions, I'm nervous guys, um, called me out on two specific occasions when I was an asshole with junior writers and whose sense of fairness um, has been very formative to me. And Aaron Martin, who told me that a showrunner can't be insecure. And uh, he's been a mentor to me uh, since we first worked together. And my husband, Michael Healy, because showrunning is a family job. Um, when I started writing, I was a playwright. 
And so I spent all my time alone thinking my thoughts and wanting everyone to see me and my unique brilliance. Uh, a lot of my plays I now realize were about the fact that I was depressed, which explains why they weren't more popular. Uh, and then when I started working in TV, other people were, uh, were really a shock. And uh, I, that feeling of you're the best in the room, you're the worst in the room, um, that feeling that you have really um, became very real to me and I became very competitive. And uh, that competitiveness goes to the general ethos of how we make TV. Uh, you suck it up, you work until you drop and you rise. Uh, Terrence McNally, the playwright who died of COVID last year said that in this, everyone in this business is a killer. And that's true. If you're able to keep going in this business, then there is something of the shark to you. And I include myself in this. But at a certain point, if you're a shark, your only companion on your journey is going to be a remora. Uh, if we go through the world in that way, not seeing other people fully and not letting them fully be themselves and not letting ideas that are new express themselves in new ways, we're going to be fucked. Either everyone is a person or no one is. I'm flipping pages, guys. There's only one more page. though. Um, I used to prize uh, my own journey and my own success, but I have come to think of this very differently. I've come to believe deeply that representation matters. Anybody who's got privilege, you can use it to bring someone up. I believe in having a safe writing room. The streets aren't safe for our BIPOC brothers and sisters. The air isn't safe. We need to be safe for each other. And yet our Canadian industry is contracting apocalyptically. The streamers are coming in with their giant invisible hands to shake up our little Christmas tree. We are no longer making enough episodes of Canadian TV to sustain our ecosystem. Even so, I believe we have to fight to get our junior and mid-level writers into prep and on set. We need to bring up and promote the next generation of diverse showrunners. We fight to get an agent, we fight to get in a room, we fight, to, we fight to get to write the best episode, we fight for credit, we fight for money, we fight to get our own show in development and to get it ordered. We need to continue to fight for each other with solidarity, even as a scarcity, scarcity mentality sets in and we agitate for our own professional futures. As writers, we are flowers. We eat the sun. We make something out of nothing, out of vibrations that only we can see. As screenwriters, we hope to have many jobs, but our jobs are not our work, which is to meet the moment with whatever we have and grow. Thank you for this beautiful, beautiful honor. Well, that just about wraps up the 2021 WGC Awards. I'm really looking forward to this closing bit because I uh, got a writer to uh, put some stuff down on the paper. Oh, yes, thank you. Okay, well, I don't have any cash on me now. I'm a drug dealer, I'm a movie star. But can I get an advance on the funds for this thing? Because they were <sighs> Okay, well, we're off book again. So, you know, um, I'm just gonna post up at this kitchenette at the WGC headquarters in downtown Toronto, okay? And here's some writing, you know what they say. It's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> it's five o'clock here. Sandra, really? I have to wreck everything I do. That's a wrap on the 2021 WGC Screenwriting Awards. Congratulations to this year's nominees and winners. See you in 2022 at Kerner Hall, where we'll celebrate the 25th anniversary in person. We mean it this time. Good night. And uh, you know what they say, it's five o'clock somewhere. Sandra, Frig. <sighs> Don't say.
Sandra, she's so mean to me. So it's in my business. Yeah. It is five o'clock here, though. God, it's real whiskey. It's like drinking piss. Drinking fire. Okay. Okay. okay, this is it. Oh my god, I'm feeling it. Okay. <laughs>